In 1950, Darwin Ralph Gum was 16 years old when he decided to leave a children's home in Chillicothe, Ohio to join the United States Marine Corps. There were 1.5 million citizens that were drafted into the Korean War, but Darwin Gum was one of 1.3 million that enlisted and were sure to see combat action during their time in Korea. On March 13, 1950, three days from his 17th birthday, he was sent to Cincinnati to get sworn in. He said, well, you can't be sworn in until you're 17. You say three days? I said, yeah. He said, okay, we'll get you in three days. They did, and my life started changing. After boot camp, where Gum trained for combat duty, he was assigned to the Marines 2nd Division stationed at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. They then became the Marine 1st Division at Camp Pendleton, California, under the command of Louis Chesty Puller. Getting ready to ship to Korea, he learned that he couldn't go into combat until he turned 18. So they made me stay in Japan, which I didn't mind it, good duty. I mean, I got some real good duties. I was a turnkey of a prison. Uh, that, in other words, you're in charge of the whole prison. And uh, at 17 years old, that was something. Private Gum got into a little bit of trouble that he did not want to disclose in our interview, but it was bad enough that he had to get up in front of Chesty Puller. Something happened, which I would not say what happened, but uh, other than I had to get up in front of the old man, he said he was going to send me over to Korea under guard. Now, you don't need to do that. I want to go anyway. He said, okay, how old are you? 17? Would he be 18? I said, next month. He said, well, you can go in now. Well, they sent me on over. So wouldn't you know it? He flew over, and on the way over, the plane that I was in caught on fire. And we had to make an emergency landing in Kimpo, Kimpo Airfield in Korea. And we didn't wait for the sergeant to tell us to get out of the plane. We jumped out of the side of it that burned off in the foam. So from that point on, we made our way up to front lines. It didn't take long for Private Gum to come face to face with the North Korean Army. I was spearheading the outfit, and that's a guy that goes right out in the front. So the walkie-talkie, and you keep in contact with the force behind you. Well, I got on the walkie-talkie, and I told the commanding officer back, I said, sir, I said, I smell something funny up here. He said, what do you smell? I said, smells like gunpowder and garlic. He said, hit the deck. That's why he said, you're in the nest of the enemy right now. That's what they smell like. I mean, I hit the deck, too. And everybody was starting to come up. And the commanding officer gave the command up and at him. So I raised up, started to go up the mount, on, on up. And I was about 25 feet, I didn't know this at the time, I was about 25 feet from two machine gun nests. One was a 50 caliber machine gun, and one was with a burp gun in it. And the other one was a 30 caliber machine gun with a burp gun in it. The 50 caliber opened up on me and he shot my helmet off my head, which I did not have a strap, and thank God I didn't because it would have broke my neck. And it knocked me back down over the mountain, maybe 100 to 150 yards. Made me a little bit mad when I got down there. Even after he was wounded three times, Gum kept his sense of honor and compassion. This compassion served him well when he came upon an enemy soldier. He had bones sticking out all over his poor body. He had one hand under him. And I walked up to him and looked at him and I said, Mizu, which means water. He nodded his head. So I took my canteen out, turned his face over to where I could pour some water in his mouth. And some of the guys yelled at me, Gummy, leave him alone. I said, he's going to die anyway. I couldn't do that. He took the water, 
But he went more and he shook his head. I poured some more in his mouth. Doing that little bit of kindness, he looked up at me, took one hand, and pointed at my hand, and went like that. So I was put my hand down there, he took my hand, put it down below him, and went like that. So I went underneath of him, returned, and here he was holding a live hand grenade, and he was going to kill us. Since I gave him that water, he let me take the hand grenade out of, him, out of his hand. I brought it out, caught him fire in the hole, and I threw it. Just a little bit of kindness to your enemy. They're human too. Private Gum was wounded two more times after the initial 50 caliber incident. Soldiers who have been wounded twice typically receive two Purple Hearts and are sent home. He convinced the medics that he didn't need to go home and wanted to stay on the front lines. His luck ran out when the soldier walking in front of him stepped on the notorious Bouncing Betty landmine. He couldn't convince the medics this time, as this injury would require surgery. That thing, when they got me back to a, a aid station similar to a mash that you see on television, but wasn't that that nice. And they got around to me, the little guy that was given the ether, he fell asleep, fell off the stool. Well, I woke up during my operation and they had my intestines out of me in a tray on the right side of me. Of course, they had me strapped down, but I didn't feel anything. I tried to raise up, and all I could do was raise my head up. And uh, the lieutenant that was operating on me said, Somebody put this man back to sleep. And uh, there was a patient walking through. Tell how nice it was. And he yelled at the patient, get over here, man. Guy come over, he said, what do you want me to do? He said, start putting this mask on that boy's face and putting a few drops of ether on him. I'll tell you when it's enough. And I want him to put to sleep now. And all I could see was this huge hand coming at me, which was the surgeon and he hit me right in the face with his big hand. After surgery, he recovered in Japan. It was there that he was awarded one of his four Purple Hearts. He was sent back to the States where he recovered at the Great Lakes Naval Hospital. After he recovered, he came home to Ohio. Dad used to go to Fairmont's restaurant and uh, get his coffee and everything. He, Met this little girl over there, telling her about having a son in Korea. I want you to meet him when he comes home. Well, I did. She's back in that room right now. We've been married 63 years. 